Sweden has announced plans for up to five new reactors, their first in 40 years, and it's a couple of familiar designs that we've seen before. Vattenfall Sweden has narrowed the finalists down to two, GE's BWRX300 and the Rolls-Royce SMR. And since Sweden is targeting 1500 megawatts of electricity, that means either five BWRX300s or three Rolls-Royce SMRs. The process actually began with 75 potential suppliers, and then narrowed it down to a short list of five, including GE, Rolls-Royce, a large-scale Westinghouse, and a large-scale Framatome reactor, and previously also included KHNP, which withdrew back in December. But their final selection is now down to just the two SMRs, so they've discarded the large reactors. And the reason for this is space constraints at the existing Ringhals plant. The utility said that the modular reactors will have less impact on the existing operations at the Ringhals nuclear plant compared to the alternatives. And by selecting SMRs, Vattenfall reduces workforce needs and ensures manageable logistics, which it said significantly reduces the risk of delays and increased costs. So despite operating two large plants already at ring hulls and needing an additional 1500 megawatts, they've decided that in order to minimize impact, construction crews, the environment, that they would prefer to build a series of small modular reactors rather than one large one. Building a series of smaller units provides clear cost advantages, they take up less space, require significantly smaller workforce, and involve more manageable logistics. It also increases the possibility of finding, housing, and transporting employees during the construction phase, which reduces the increased risk of cost. The Swedish government has also more or less de-risked the project by guaranteeing loans for up to about 5 gigawatts of nuclear and specifying two-way contract for difference for the strike price. Details on these two finance mechanisms have not been revealed yet and will probably depend on when the projects actually get going. But we'd expect that any kind of government loan guarantees and contract for difference strike pricing is going to be a lightning rod for further negotiations. And this project does align with Sweden's goals of reaching 100% renewables. Muck wind farms. But one of the real reasons that Sweden is pursuing nuclear energy, especially at the existing Vattenfall site, is because of the difference in price and electricity between northern Sweden and southern Sweden. The south has a lot larger industrial base and therefore pays a lot higher electricity prices. But a lot of the renewable energy is generated in the north and has to be transmitted south. The idea is now that by adding one and a half gigawatts to the southern portion where Ringhals is located, the country can try and stabilize the north-south price difference split, because relying on always-on nuclear would be able to provide that reliable baseload energy. And Sweden has already answered the question about what to do with the waste. Plans and construction are well underway at the Forsmark Deep Repository, so there is going to be an underground repository similar to what's going on in Finland, where the waste can be stored long term. And another interesting thing is the selection of the technology. The BWRX300 and the Rolls-Royce SMR, neither of these are what we would call advanced reactors. They're more scaled down versions of existing, more traditional designs. And that also means that both of them have more traditional fuel supplies, relying on typical BWR or PWR fuel, and therefore not needing the HALU fuel that we've seen some of the other designs need. And Sweden did mention that this was a big consideration. It would allow them to deploy the reactors much more quickly. And both of these designs also are not going to be first of a kind within Sweden. The BWRX300 is already under construction in Canada at the Darlington facility, where one unit is already under construction and the other three are expected to come along over the next few years. And the Rolls-Royce SMR, which was recently selected in the UK under Great British Nuclear Energy. And that was expected to be then the first construction of the Rolls-Royce SMR. So Sweden is taking a very traditional Nordic approach here and selecting two pragmatic options that would allow them to have nuclear energy added without taking on a whole bunch of unnecessary risk in terms of technology. They haven't announced yet when they're going to make a final decision, but we expect negotiations to start now and then continue over through the rest of the year. So we might see something by the end of 2025 or early 2026. But this does perhaps most importantly give more momentum to GE's BWRX300 and the Rolls-Royce SMR. We made a video a couple of years ago about why the GE BWRX300 was probably going to be well positioned to win, and we're starting to see that. So if you want to check that video out, I'll leave the link down below. And thanks for watching.